And we're back with EdgeStream TV. I want to thank Gary for leading us into another great day, another great show. You will see I am being joined on the corner of the screen here by Chris Burgos from New Tech. Hey, Chris. How's it going, man? It's going excellent. Excellent. Um, I know the real star of today's show is going to be the three-play system. <laughs> um, we had Alex from New Tech join us the other day to give us a really nice demo of the TriCaster Mini and everything that the TriCaster systems can do from the point of live production. Today, I asked you to join us to really focus on the three-play and the sports production aspect. And Chris, I know you long enough to know that one of your personal interests is also in the esports and gaming world, right? That's true, Jim. Yeah, I come from, uh, I've done both sides. I've, I've done live sports and I've done uh, esports as well. And so uh, I, I think I, I speak from a lot of experience. And what I hope to show today is uh, the simple effectiveness of what the three play brings and how it can help both sides of that, those uh, events that we have going on. So uh, uh, that, that's, there's a lot of my personal passions, as you said. I, I, absolutely. And that's one of the points I really wanted to get out of the way right here in the beginning is how these worlds are converging. I mean, even if you watch an esports tournament, you'll see that the coverage is really duplicating what ESPN is doing on a regular sports production. And as we see that get more and more advanced, we're going to see that more and more often. And it's products like the new Tech 3 Play that really help make that. So Chris, we're gonna start off and I'm gonna ask you one of the key questions, and that is how does the 3 Play work? How does it actually capture the content that it's working with in the sports world? Yeah, I think this is a, an important topic that I think often we have to discuss because uh, for a lot of people, they, they've seen replay, right? You, you yeah. talked about maybe you watch sports on TV or you've sort of uh, worked at this, uh, you know, you, you've watched an esports event on a stream. But you, when you watch a replay, you don't necessarily know what's going into it. So what we do on the three play is really straightforward. We have four camera inputs coming into the system and those can be physical connected or IP. And we're actually recording those all simultaneously. So what the net effect that you get is you have the ability to pick any angle of any of the shots you're taking and, and start to produce a, a replay angle and start to release a replay clip that really helps for storytelling. Uh, and so uh, in a few moments here, uh, as we dig a little deeper, I'm gonna showcase some of the workflow, but just keep in mind, once we start recording, we're recording all of our cameras for the entirety of the show. And this really allows us to always go back and grab that essential content. And I'm gonna show a couple tips and tricks that will help make sure that if you're looking at the three play, that you're always able to do the correct storytelling. And I think that goes back to your initial point about how these worlds are converging. Replay is that crucial element that really brings the sporting event to that, that pinnacle of great storytelling, great matchups, competitiveness, the, the, the three play is going to help you do all these things. No, absolutely. And I think you touched on a really great point with the multi-camera capability. You know, the first or the most basic way to think of instant replay is, wow, that was a great shot or that was a great play. Let's go back and see it again. But then we're also going to talk about maybe a referee review or a coach's analysis where not only do you want to go back and see the play again, but you want to see it from every angle. Did the wide receiver get both feet in bounds before he mar marched off the sideline? Uh, these are obviously what we're seeing on any given Sunday, but it's something that's a very important part of having your school production match what your audience is used to seeing uh, on a regular broadcast station. Yeah, that's true, Jim. I think there's a lot of opportunity for schools that maybe don't think it's possible to mimic what the pros are doing, whether that be on major streams or on TV. And and, and with the three play, it's really accessible. I think you can really do these basic replays. And and, and I, I'd love to showcase it to you. So what I'm going to do is sort of transition over uh, and Perfect. bring my replay into our production here. You sort of see me shrink down. And uh, what, if we could put that on our main screen. Great, guys. It. Okay, so here we have uh, the three play, and, and it's in all its glory. Uh, I'm recording a bunch of angles, and as we're watching sort of the clips happen, I can go through and really easily just use one button to take my replay. I can hit the set out button, and you'll notice that I've generated a clip that's now highlighted in blue. Well, this is as easy as you can to make a three play happen. I'm going to go over to my clip list, and now I have that replay that we just captured, and I'm just going to hit play. And there we go, we have a simple, easy replay right there at the sideline, there's that play where there's a little scramble for the ball. So it can be that simple to create a replay with three play. You have a bunch of different angles, a bunch of different camera angles you can work with. And with one button, we can actually showcase all of the workflow. 
So just hitting the mark out button on the control surface allows us to go backwards in time and say, hey, after the play ended, I can capture all this content and replay it very quickly. Another very popular way to do replays is very simply turning the jog shuttle back. Because all that content has been captured, you can now see that play out happening on my A channel where I'm going backwards in time. I can just go back to a moment in time, wait, maybe this is the start of the line, and then just hit play. So there's lots of different ways to approach simple replays with the three play with both the one button mark out, and you have full control over those as an operator. In my options menu, I can set how far in the past I want my replay to happen. So realistically speaking, this is going to vary from sport to sport, but it really lowers the barrier to entry to someone who's a complete novice to only have to hit one button to grab that replay content. And I think it really makes it easy for any level of, of schooling, whether that's middle school, high school, all the way up through college, to approach replay, even if they don't know the sport. With one button, you can grab that content and be ready to send a replay over. Absolutely. And Chris, I'll say for those who do know the sport, I'm looking at your sample footage and the call on the field stands. OK, I don't yes. I'm not overturning <laughs> anything right there. Um, yeah, but definitely. I, I think one of the cool things that you just showed off in the demo, though, is how easy it is to do it. And of course, the easier the tools are, the more approachable it is for any school to approach that broadcast quality level of what their audience is used to seeing. So. Chris, what more can schools do with the three play to kind of approach that sports workflow? Yeah, I think I start to think of what we grow beyond just the quick instant replay, right? Yep. I think when we're talking about uh, what really sort of makes our viewing experience unique, you know, when we're going to commercial break, if something just important happened, we want to see that content right away. As fans, we're sort of trained at that pro level to say, all right, the, a flag just stopped, the foul just happened. I want to, you know, give me that last chunk of content. And especially if you're really engaged in what's going on, you're always going to want to see that. So with our with our three-play system, we can really quickly create these sort of multi-angle highlight reels with effortless ease. It is yep. very straightforward. So we have the ability to make our own uh, playlists. And these are the things that we might use before we go to commercial break, before we go to halftime. And most importantly, when we're talking about storytelling, we make these playlists to highlight our players, the reason why we won, I think as a school, this presents two opportunities. One, the ability to showcase your talented players. And this is going to be important as they progress through. High school players get scouted by great colleges because there's footage of them. And yep. college players get drafted because there's opportunities to watch these guys as they progress in the collegiate years and then for pro teams to approach them. So the ability to make these sort of playlists is important. And then we then take that up to the final notch of we really want to be able to do some kind of slow-mo replay. And so what I'm going to do really quickly here is showcase uh, a, a playlist setup. And so we'll switch over to the main screen here, okay, and I'll great. do my cool little tri slide transition. Nice. Um, okay, so we're going to just create a couple of simple replay clips. Um, here we have uh, this guy's getting stopped, and we're going to grab another clip. And then uh, we're going to go and we're watching over here on the sidelines here. We're going to grab another clip. Okay, so I've just grabbed a bunch of clips uh, in my replay list. And so you can notice that I'm going to highlight go through and go and say, okay, you know what? What we really care about is this clip. On my control surface in my UI, I can actually add a clip to the playlist. So I'm going to go over and go to this brand new blank playlist. And I'm going to add this clip to my playlist. Okay, I'm starting to do some of the storytelling and building I want for the purposes of my show. I'm going to add another clip to my playlist. And let's go back and grab that initial clip that we made. Now I can start to create this cool playlist that'll get me out to commercial break. And I have all the capabilities to increase and decrease the speed when I'm playing that out. And so I'll play this list. And then we can slow it down and really focus on, hey, these guys were, that, that's, there's that essential play that really made the big stop. I've added some transitions here, and, and uh, uh, I apologize. These are sort of left over. These are another way to further enhance what we're doing in our playlist setup. So we're, here we have a bunch of stock transitions. We can have the flag. We can have a replay wipe. All of these things will sort of enhance and, and change the way we play out content. And so this is how we sort of take things beyond just making a traditional melt reel and really enhancing our workflow. I think if you have sponsored content or you're part of a league, the ability to include this kind of transition and what's going on is a big selling point to what your replay does. And finally, it highlights this last point of replay is also part of sort of what our show is doing. 
beyond what the players are doing from a competitive perspective, we may have people who have an invested stake. Maybe we're part of a league, maybe we're a sponsored organization, and Replay presents a great opportunity to add custom content like videos and these transitions that we just showcased to sort of amp up what we're doing and make it look like more what the professionals are doing. So I look at all those playlist features and say, these are ways that we can really step things up. I wanna showcase one last thing that we have in the clip list setups. So before we grabbed an angle on a replay, and here's another cool thing we can do. I'm gonna do this angle A replay, and I'm gonna start playing, and I'm gonna slow my clip down. This is gonna be some time. In the three play, even though I'm playing out this one angle, I can actually bounce between the different camera angles. I think of sports like baseball and a lot of things we have that are high impact, like maybe tennis, where that two or five seconds of content where the ball's in play, I may have to balance between a couple of different angles. You'll notice I'm not building a custom playlist for this. I'm just doing the play out and using the angle button, the control surface, to go between my three camera angles. This loops back around on that first point we talked about where I'm always recording all the content. And so I always have the opportunity to grab that content and play it out. So I think playlists and multi-angle play out really help enhance what a student organization looking to do replay is capable of. Absolutely, and Chris, I love that you're demonstrating all these different ways of going beyond just the basic instant replay and what people think of as instant replay. Uh, one of the things that immediately pops off to the top of my head is for a smaller school who's looking for boosters and sponsorships for their sports program, they can have a local car dealership sponsor the drive of the game and now all of a sudden get ready to go to the halftime show and you have that sponsored content and you're giving these people who are coming in and supporting your teams the opportunity to have that additional content. I, I really look at the, the sort of pipeline on both sides of both where the, the athletics is ha happening, the competition, and what the production experience is. Yep. At the college level, those organizations that are getting televised almost always have multiple layers of sponsorship. The college itself and, and the league to which the college represents are always sponsoring those little bump in banners right before we go to a traditional commercial break. Absolutely. And so in your three play, you can actually ingest that media and in the playlist, just play that clip. So I could make a playlist that goes three, the last three important plays or maybe the very last impactful play. Maybe there's a giant fumble right before we cut to break, right? Hey, we're gonna showcase that. And in that same playlist, I can load that content and say, hey, now here's the bumper for the league. Now here's the bumper for the school. And then the broadcast can transition into commercials. This is what's happening around the clock in sports productions. There's a very tight timeline of making sure that we showcase our, our sports, our competition, and we hit our sponsors. That's all possible to do in a three play. And I think you bring up a great point, especially for lots of smaller organizations. You know, uh, the local baseball team, uh, the local Little League guys, I know they're sponsored by pizza shops and all the little local businesses around my town. So why not give those guys the opportunity to pop, pop an ad in, elevate your production so students get access to that pro-level experience and have this very nice looking opportunity, especially I think of something like a Facebook or YouTube stream where people aren't expecting to be wowed by the presentation. You can really change somebody's opinion and have a, a high school ba baseball team looking like they're playing for the pros right. because, hey, this is on stream, but we have access to all these tools. So as we start to piece together all of these pieces in what the three play is doing from an operational perspective, it really builds on that professional workflow, but making it really approachable. And Chris, that's a perfect segue into the next talking point that I had, because it's very easy with these replay systems to take care of the school and to take care of the sponsors. But I think what's also of interest to the audience joining us today is how can these features help the students maximize their workflow and maximize the replay system? Yeah, I, I think of two things when I think about this, Jim. Um, there's two pieces that I think are going to change what a three play can do beyond a traditional replay. There's other replay solutions on the market. They're gonna do playlists. They're gonna do the ability to slow-mo. They're gonna give you multiple channels of record. But the three play has two really cool features. Um, I'm gonna highlight one of them, which is the Telestrator. Um, I'm actually gonna change my, my viewpoint here. Uh, so we're gonna go through and I'm gonna actually uh, do my slide over. And we're gonna take, here is my Telestrator. So this is an application that comes with the three play. 
Um, it's a free application. It goes on any Windows system. You could put it on a tablet, just like they do in the NFL, where they have those Windows surfaces. And I can actually get my John Madden on <laughs> and, 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 and draw on the replay clip. Because the Telestration app comes with replay, it also has controls. They're somewhat hidden behind my face where I can advance and play clips out. I have a lot of layers of control. And then what I'm going to do is come back to my three play screen. So now we're back at my three play. I actually can layer that graphic over the replay channel. And these little pieces that just come with the three play experience really set, set the pace for low level of entry, but professional level production. So you can have students in, in an organization where one student is going to do telestration. One student's going to add the graphic layer, and this is going to be combined with the TriCaster or the three play because it's an NDI application. And then we're going to have that final replay mastery where we're going to maybe add the layer in, remove, take the layer off, play the clip out. There's so many interweaving parts into how the three play can really sort of change the game for that student organization. So I look at the opportunity to have multiple students working together and do something that I think most people don't think is possible without spending a lot of money. Telestration systems, especially back, uh, you know, the, the, the ones that we are modeled off of. I talked about John Madden sort of the old days. These things were not inexpensive. Today, with the purchase of your three play, you get your controller and you get the software to do telestration that can go in a laptop or a tablet and really combines to this nice overall workflow. Absolutely. And Chris, my son just headed down to the University of Arkansas. And one of the things that I found interesting when he was looking at schools is how almost every broadcast and journalism program in the country now has a sports broadcasting focus as part of the program. Yeah. And then there are other schools that really focus on sports broadcasting almost as its primary focus. So the, these tools, like the Telestrator, is one of those things that makes sports broadcasting and production unique from a lot of other applications like broadcast news. Yeah, I, I, I agree. In, in it, it is, it's a little tool, right? Yep. It's just telestration. It's just drawing on top of what we got going on. We can do player highlights. We can sort of uh, erase things. We can sort of maximize the way this image is looking by like adding little highlights and notes. But it's an important tool that I think most people might think is is far away from them. And and I know it's what we're gonna about to talk about. And I think telestration is half of it because as sports fans, we're so used to this gym, we're so used to this being part of the production that when we see it, it'll surprise you when it comes up. It's in esports, it's in pro sports, especially at the broadcast level. These guys are already doing it. With the purchase of your three play, you get access to that. And then I think the last point. Um, and, and I'm sort of jumping ahead on us, but I really want to cover this. Storytelling in sports is over a long period of time. Yeah. At the high school level, you may have an athlete for four levels, start at the junior varsity, progress to the varsity level, and you can tell the story of a player. You can also tell the story of a school, the legacy of an organization. We know these storied colleges at the, at the football level, where they are always going to be in the bowl games. They have a long history of amazing players. To do that, you have to get a bulk of content. The three pay is going to capture that content. And, and I think you're going to ask the next question. I want to give you the opportunity to. <laughs> but there's one other piece that we can add with the three play to finish this all off. Uh, Chris, I don't have any more questions for you. My last question sure. is going to be comparing the hardware itself. But if you've got oh. something else you want to cover, please do. There's one last thing, and I think this Please. is the coolest feature set of the three plane. It just talks about this topic I brought up, which is I have a story to tell that's more than just my game. I'm going to be able to capture the game with the feature set we've showcased. But I'm going to transition to just showing you the last cool feature of what, to me, sets 3Play apart. And it's very ingenious. It's our tagging system. So I'm going to transition over and showcase the screen one more time. Cool. At the bottom of my screen... And uh, I'm gonna have to. I might have to drag this up so we can see it. Um, we have my tagging system, and if you give me a moment, I will make it so this is towards the bottom of your guy's screen as well. We'll just go. Whoop. Okay. We see these tags at the very bottom of the screen. They're highlighted in green. I've done a lot of uh, replay in my lifetime, and I have devised my own little system of what makes sense. These tags are going to be metadata that I'm going to add to the clips. Little, little pieces of information that are going to make my life easier for doing storytelling. 
I sort of devised my own system, again, from field experience, where I want to talk about the periods of time, whether that's quarters, halves, periods. I want to denote how this game is just broken down up in time. Then I'm going to talk about the teams. My home team's roster, I probably know every player by their jersey number. So as a shortcut, I'm going to add a tag that uses their jersey number to reference their name. Depending on the level of professional sports or if you're at the high school or college level, you may or may not have the away team's roster. So I'm just going to use general numbers for the away team. And then in this case, because I'm covering football, I'm going to use plays that are relevant to football. And so these are all things that I might consider important to my football. When there's a first down, when there's a touchdown, there's a flag, someone gets tackled, a block, a fumble. I'm going to use these tags, which I think are essential when we're talking about football replay. Last little tag, this is a sl slick little tool that anyone could use. I just call it highlight, and it just has the word yes on it. For me, at the end of my game, when I'm going to do this final story of what actually happened, I'm going to pull from a subset of clips that I've taken throughout the game, given metadata, and I'm going to append this highlight on them, which lets me know, hey, at the end of my game, I might need five clips to tell the whole story of this game. You know, maybe some important parts from the first quarter, second quarter, third quarter. And then finally, hey, here's how we actually won the clip, won the game. Those highlights I'm going to mark. And so in practice, what this looks like is I, I'm going to grab a replay clip. And so uh, I'm also going to remove my, my telestration. Okay, this guy's coming off the line and... Our play is going to fizzle out over here. Okay, I'm going to grab my replay clip. Great. I know I have that clip ready, right? I can play that clip like I did before. But I'm also going to hit the tag system. So let's just say this is in the fourth quarter. I hit the four button, and we can now start to see that little blue bar came up. It says the word fourth. Okay? I'm going to advance my tags and come over. Now I can hit the player's jersey number. In this case, I'm going to say it was two. It was, it was me, Burgos. I'm not going to focus on who the opposing player was. I'm just going to hit the zero button and skip that tag. I'm going to say that that was a, a fumble because we, in the clip we know. And I'm going to append that as a highlight yes. And now with the control surface and the tags, I've given meta context to that clip. And so later when I want to go back and say, hey, how many times did Burgos make a play? I can actually search through every replay clip that I've generated, and it'll go back and say, oh, here are all the play here are all the times where Burgos is making an important play. These pieces really change the game for our replay systems. First and foremost, our highlight reels will always be relevant because we'll always have the metadata. And while I've tagged one camera angle, the other camera angles are all present. Second, when I'm doing generational storytelling, when I'm doing more than just the story of today's game. Maybe we have an intense rivalry with the school we're talking to. I can go through and tag clips relevant to the schools going at each other so I can talk about our record. Maybe we're up 6-3 in the series. I can grab those tag clips and use them in later events. So that ability to sort of approach an archived workflow and do the essential of sports and esports storytelling, which is both today's game, our star player, and our intense rivalry is all possible with a three play. And the clip system, excuse me, the tagging system makes this super accessible. I'm translating words into numbers in a way that's very easy and organic, and I'm just using the control surface to hit those buttons. I think it's a really great workflow for a lot of people to approach. I think when you get a student body in front of it, they're going to take to it very quickly. And you'll start to hear in three play when people are using it for your replay system, they'll just start shouting out numbers. Oh, that was a two, five, four. You know, that was in the second quarter. That's player five. And that's our fourth. You know, that's that's a play for that's a fumble or something like that. Right. People start to develop their own codes and languages and it gets really cool for presentation purposes. So my personal pick for what really makes three play just this amazing tool is that tagging system to really take you guys to that final, final level of professional approach with ease of entry. Absolutely. And Chris, what I love is you touched on a recurring theme that we've had during the entire EdgeStream event. And that's how this live production capability carries on to post-production and does carry on to more and more that you can do for the school. Uh, Chris, now I want to talk about the star with all this capability that we talked about, and that is the three-play system. New Tech does have two systems available, the 3P1 yes. and the 3P2, and we have a nationwide network of system integrators and VARs 
who are trained to bring you the right system for your school to help get you up and running with your full production capability. That could include a TriCaster 1 Pro with a 3P2. It could include a TriCaster 2 Elite and everything else in between. Uh, we have a great relationship with Chris, with Alex, who joined us the other day from New Tech, and with all of our integrators across the country. So give us a call at 800-323-2325, and we can help match you up with the right partner to get your school up and running with the production and with the replay capability. Chris, thank you so much for joining us today. Jim, it's a pleasure, man. Thanks, as always. It's always great we link up. And uh, thanks for having us. And thanks for everyone for tuning in and listening to what we have on New Tech and the 3 Play. Awesome, man. Thank you so much. Coming up next, we are going to have George Clipper from LiveU joining us to show off the LiveU Solo and to show how the LiveU Solo can be used anywhere in your school, including the sidelines. So stay tuned. George is coming up next.